Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and I've been missing from YouTube for so long. I'm feeling super rusty and a little bit awkward. So what I'm going to do to break the ice is do a few things in this video. I'm going to give you a mini craft room tour so you can see what's on the other side of this gnome home. And I'm also going to say hello on camera, and then we're going to come back here. I'm going to give you a gnome home tour. I'm going to introduce you to all my characters, and then we're going to build some mushrooms together. I'm going to use Sculpey clay for that, and I'll show you how I attach them to the tree and all that good stuff. And there are timestamps in the pinned comment below, so you don't have to watch anything you don't want to. And with all that said, let's just get started. So right here, I'm standing at the door to my hallway. So I just walked in and shut the door. But yeah, there's my curtain of lights. Those were like 13 bucks at Walmart. And my daughter painted this for me, which I absolutely adore. And right here is my beautiful desk that I just built myself using scrap lumber. I used to have a table here that I used for sewing and it was always too wide and not any storage. So I threw that out and built something more useful. I got a little place for my sewing machine. Some other odds and ends in there. And I even put in a little cubby for my scrapbook paper. And there's a shelf I put up that hold some of my original characters that are a little bit too big for the gnome home. Hazel and Harriet. The lemon trees. And a little bunny that I, one of my first little characters I made out of newspaper, I think 2012 or 13 or something like that. Just playing around one day. And I have a big mirror over here where I'm going to say hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't know why, but I did an introduction this morning, which is me in the camera, and I couldn't do it. I felt so rusty and so awkward, I just couldn't do it. So I scrapped that idea and I thought, I'll just sneak it into a little tour. And then that way we can say hello to each other and I feel a little safer. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Anyway, on the other side of that wall is a new room that we just built for my daughter. My dad and I built their room and I lost the window. So that's why we have the big mirror here to bring some light back in. And I put some big lights up there. And then I have, uh, instead of losing the whole window altogether, I just turned it into a paint shelf. And just in case anyone was wondering what was sitting on this shelf underneath my big mirror, I have Stephen the Skeleton Fairy, because everybody needs a Stephen. And some mushrooms that I recently put together. And we have a wall, a brick wall over there with a worm. So I turned his house into a brick wall, but the house itself is just a cardboard box. And I have a video showing how I put that together with a floor on the inside that folds down. So you open up the front doors and the floor folds down and it becomes a little house. So if you're interested in that, I'll stick the uh, video tutorial in the pinned comments. And I'm still organizing over here. I've made a lot of progress and I'm really happy with uh, the workspace in here now. I had struggled with um, finding space <laughs> for a long time. This is a huge desk. I got this at a thrift store. And then I have a big shelf over there that I'm still sorting through. And I'll just give you a quick tour of what's on my desk at the moment. I have a diffuser. I put pine essential oils in there. Oh my gosh, it smells like a forest in here most of the time. I have my Alexa back there. I whisper her name so she doesn't answer me. And I listen to audiobooks while I'm working. Rock Tumblr just got that. I got bottle glass and sea glass and acorns. Um, the glass stuff is going to be coming up in a video eventually here. And the acorns, I'm just, I just pulled these out because I'm sending some to my cousin who's doing a uh, crafting project. And just some old cigar boxes that holds uh, little odds and ends for me and a shelf there with whatever. <laughs> and a saw, of course. I use this for um, cutting twigs and stuff for the for the gnome home. And my old hammer that my kids drew on when they were little, it was so cute. I'm gonna be putting that on the wall. I use this one all the time as well. All right, guys, here I am talking into a mirror again. I know that's a little weird for you, but it makes me feel comfortable. <laughs> so we're going to head back over to the gnome home. I hope you enjoy this little craft room tour. And we will do a longer one another day once I get working on the other side. Right now, there's nothing to see but a mess over there. So hope you enjoyed the mini tour on this side. Let's head back over to the gnome home. I'll give you some of the updates that I've done in the last month or so. And then we'll get started making those mushrooms. All right, so there's four trees here. One, two, three, four. And all of them were pretty short before from here down. So the biggest update here, I guess, would be the height that I added from here up. Uh, some of them got branches as well. 
and I added a rope bridge. Lots of balconies, lots of mushrooms. And all of these trees are hollow and they do have rooms inside of them. In fact, this is called the gnome's bed and breakfast and all the characters I've made myself. These are needle felted gnomes. This is Aunt Cutry. Annie the gnome. And I have a couple of dwarf rats. Those are made from paper clay. That's Big Mac and Little Jack. And I got a mole. His name is Professor Horn. And then there's Otty the gnome. And Nomi was the first one I ever made in 2013. And Freddy the Riding Snail, Baby Mouse. This is a little uh, dragonfly that my friend just made me. Kim from Kim's Sticks and Strings on Facebook. That was a custom order. And we can't forget about Louie. He's a little naked troll here. He's a stonemason. He does all the stone work here in the gnome home. He wears a stonemason's hammer, thank goodness. Look at that face. Isn't he a sight to behold? Beautiful little guy. <laughs> Yes, a face only a mother could love. <laughs> he was made with paper clay. I put him together in 2015, I think, so he's been around for a while. And then over here, I'm currently working on the pond, and this is not a sponsored video, but I get this question a lot, what I use for the water, and it's called Art Resin. I get it off of Amazon. So I'm working on this section here, just putting the basin together, which is foil, uh, masking tape, and then I put hot glue in there to seal everything. And then I paint it and then I'm, I have to add in the little creatures and little wood things and fish maybe. I'm not too sure what I'm going to put in this one yet. So when I'm all done, it's going to connect from here to here and then flow down here. So I think that'll look pretty cool. comes all the way back around again. If you're new here and you've never seen these trees before, I do make them myself and I've been sharing the fake bark process on my blog and YouTube channel for a number of years now. And in fact, if you're looking for a Halloween project, I have a video called How to Make a Spooky Tree and it will walk you through all the steps of making a small little tree with fingers, like branches and little fingers, and how to add the bark and how to paint it, how I do this paint color here. And all of that is in that video. So if you're interested, that will be popping up on your screen. And if you would prefer not a spooky tree, I have other videos that will show you the same process. All right, guys, let's get started making those mushrooms. And again, this is a quick and easy project and I chose it because I am so rusty right now in making videos. And I thought it would be a nice way to break the ice and get back into the swing of things. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. All right, my friends, let's just dive right in. For this one, I'm using Sculpey Clay. I get this off Amazon. You can use whatever clay you want to use. I find this one really nice to work with. It stays nice and soft until you bake it. And a couple of paint brushes. And for my mushrooms, I finish them all off with a Varathane, a clear coat. You can use any brand that you want to use. Just make sure it's a water-based uh, sealer. The colors I use are Orange Spice, Golden Brown, and Cinnamon Brown. And I almost forgot to mention what I used for the stem, which is an off-white. Normally I buy one that says antique white. This is all that was in the store and it did the job. Just an off-white cream color will work nicely for a stem. All right, guys, I am using foil that I just uh, doubled over and I make these little things that I can pick up on the sides. And that's all I use. You might want to use a nonstick pan or maybe something else with a nonstick surface on it. Uh, for what I'm using this for and for the mushrooms that I make, in the temperature that I'm baking them at, this works fine. But I just wanna make sure that you guys know that I'm no expert and you might wanna read your instructions on the back and every clay is different as well. All right, so I'm currently making my mushrooms here and I just get a little dot like that or I can do, do even smaller. It depends on what size you're wanting. I'm gonna make a ball. And then I'm gonna take the ball and I'm gonna push it onto the table, pushing down and squeezing right here, here and here. Push down and squeeze. I'm just gonna get that shape to come up. So you're doing two things at once. You're shaping the back, which is gonna be glued to the tree, this part here, that gets glued to the tree. And then this 
uh, part here is the fun part that you're shaping. And then you can shape the little stem at the bottom. And these are the quickest mushrooms I've made to date. And they fill up the space quickly. So I'm going to uh, make the formation on my foil here. And this is pretty much how they're going to get glued onto my tree. I, I do a little formation here. Then I can see what it's going to look like. And I keep going until I have as many as I, I want to have. And kind of like the shape that I want them to grow in. If you look online, Google them, and you can see how they form on trees naturally. And then I'll give you a good idea. See, this one's a little bit bigger. I got my ball. Push it down into the table and squeeze those two ends. And then the middle. And then make the stem. My nails are a little bit too long for this. <laughs> I keep getting nail marks in there. And now I'm just going to shape the, the top, give it a little bit of a ruffle, and we're done. All right, so I'm going to make some of those bigger ones as well. I got four of them there. And I don't even know what you call those ones. I just, there's so many <laughs> different varieties of mushrooms and, and things out there that you can just take any shape you want, really, and just go for it. So I'm going to give these ones a stem. So I'm just going to squeeze the bottom. And then the top. Squeeze again. And then I put it back down on the table. And I'm going to lift the middle of the stem up. So when I glue it on the tree, there's a little bit of a, a bend in the stem. So it has something to really glue on to. Okay, and then you can take something sharp or even a toothpick because this Sculpey clay really takes to anything that you do. I could even use my fingernail, but I have this little razor blade thingy that does the job really quickly. And I just make these lines, just pull it. I think I seen a cat hair there. Is there a cat hair on the screen? <laughs> Probably. I have two of those monsters. They sometimes sneak into my craft room. Okay. And again, you can make as many as you want. And these ones are a little bit thicker than these ones, of course. So when you're baking them, you have to make sure that you bake these ones long enough, the bigger ones. So I'll probably take the first ones out before I take out these ones here. All right, I decided to make some big ones here. Now, these ones, when you start branching off that far away from the stem and you have a long, thin piece like that, this is going to be very breakable. So if you're planning on putting, putting something like this onto something that you're going to be selling, I would do a little foil frame first and then put the clay on top of it. Because my tree won't be played with uh, by young people and it's not being sold and I'm using it for display purposes really and for uh, taking pictures, I will use this and it'll be fine for me. But just keep that in mind. The larger these things get, the more breakable they become. So I'm going to go ahead and make more of these and it's the same process that I used to make these. I made a ball, squish it into the table, and then make those scallop edges. All right, my friends, I had to do an edit because I totally forgot to talk about baking them. And then I totally forgot to paint them on camera. <laughs> so I had to make some more and um, do an edit. So I just made some and I'm going to put these in the oven and I just leave them on this foil. I just stick them in the oven this way. Read the directions on your package and it will tell you what temperature to use and how long to bake it. So I'm off to throw these in the oven and then I'll come back when it's time to paint them. All cooled down, so now I'm just going to paint the, I'm going to do the underneath of the mushroom first. I'm going to do them all. And this is what I did with that other group. I used the same color for all of them. And it's this creamy color, and it does take two coats. 
this part of the job is a little bit messy. Sometimes, depending on how many I've made, I'll glue them to the tree and I'll paint them right on the tree. A little bit easier too when they're in place. But uh, when you have a whole bunch and you have to glue them close together, then it's easier to do them before, of course. All right, so I'm just going to let those sit there. Oops, I missed one. I'm going to let those sit there for about 10 minutes underneath the fan. And then I'll do a second coat. The stems are dry, so now I'm going to put on the top. And this is golden brown. And this will take two coats as well. All right, that paint's dry, and now I'm ready to add my little bit of edging that I do to most all my mushrooms, and it just gives them a bit more character and some life, dirties them up a little bit. So I take a feather brush, and I'm using a cinnamon brown, and I'm going to do all the front edges, and I just pull that brush along the edge. And what you can do as well is just do some banding. You can take a paintbrush and do different colored bands. Like I said, just Google uh, the mushrooms and you can see all different colors that they that they really are. But I'm going to do these ones to match the ones that I glued on yesterday. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that to all my edges here. All right, and just like all my mushrooms after they're dried, all the paint's dry, I add a water-based sealer. And this just gives them a nice finish. This is a matte finish. But if you wanted a shiny mushroom, if you wanted it to look wet or something, you can use a high gloss one. Uh, this is water base, And you want to use a water base product on your clay. Because apparently it does, if you don't use a water-based sealer or whatever, it does something to the clay. So always stick with water-based products when you're working with the clay. So I'm just going to go over just the tops. I don't do the stems. This step also makes it easier for uh, dusting later, and these will collect dust over time. So this coat just makes that so much easier to run a cloth along them. So here's the golden brown ones, and then here's the orange spice. And then these ones here I just dotted with uh, leftover cream color in the brown, just dotted on there. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the gnome home and I'm gonna attach all of these. And for these ones, I'm actually gonna just use hot glue. And I know I always preach, don't just use hot glue when you're attaching stuff, but for what I'm using these for and what the job they're gonna do, I don't mind using hot glue. If they ever pop off, if the temperature changes in my house and they pop off, I'll just glue them back on. But if you're planning on selling your product, you never wanna just use hot glue to attach anything. So you'd want to use, you could use hot glue in the very center and then put tacky glue on the sides and push it in and then that hot glue will hold it in there while the tacky glue dries. And here's the other side and you can see very undone over here. I've recently tore off some bark that I had up and I'm redoing it. And there's the mushrooms I glued on last night and here's the ones I'm going to glue on for right now. I'm just waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up. Okay, got some hot glue on the back and just push it into place. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad I made a few more. I'll show you where those other ones ended up. So I have those scalloped ones up here, those bigger ones. And then my spotted mushrooms are over here. All right, my friends, before you go, I'll just give you a peek of what's coming up next. I am currently editing the videos for this. I'm almost done, and that one's going to be released as well. This is a piece of broken sea glass that my kids and I found on my birthday, September this year. So I took it home, and I painted on it, turned it into a stained glass window. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on the bell notifications so you get notified the next time I upload a video. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you super soon.